Star Trekking across the universe. In series like Star Trek and Star Wars, in those universes, people use faster than light travel to get from one planet to the other and not having aged, you know, several decades, if not hundreds of years, like would occur in what we think real space travel will look like. 40k is arguably not science fiction half the time, but when it is sci-fi, it likes to go a bit more extra than other properties. Instead of jumping to faster than light speeds, the ships of 40k's Imperium and several other races dip into and use pathways through another dimension, the Immaterium, also known as the Warp, and you could just call it Hell. Yes! The Warp is a dangerous maelstrom of psychic energy, the home of the Chaos Gods, hostile and unaligned entities, and demons and other not-so-hospitable forces. You wouldn't take a holiday here. This isn't Brighton. It's more like Swindon. Because of this, the travel is dangerous and at times unpredictable. Like Swindon. And this dangerous nature of warp travel, the monsters in the warp and the storms that will tear you a new arsehole. Like Swindon. All of this is a parallel to real-world travel in the earlier days of seafaring exploration. 40k itself pulls a lot from medieval and ancient influence. The 30k and 40k settings are on the back end of a dark age of technology, where mankind itself became fractured with war and other calamity. The ability to build much of the technology the most of boy space means use has been lost to time or at least if they can build it it's produced by hulking great forge world and things called standard template constructs automated construction systems that if they were to break down be lost to the enemy or destroyed they could not be replicated because the technology used to set them up is gone it's lost to time. There are literal priests that pray that guns will still work. And the tech priests of the machine cult and of Mars pray to an omnisire, a god in the machine. And there is a belief that there is a thing called a machine spirit controlling most mechanics. The 40k setting we see now is largely the tip of civilization rising above the ashes of previous wars. The remnants of once powerful technological species dealing with a harsh world in which the secrets they once understood have been lost. I'm not quite talking post-apocalyptic, although that does fit in many areas of the canon and their stories, but instead I'm talking about the Dark Age dystopia. There was a rising of a theological fascist empire to contend with the huge losses brought about by the galaxy-rending civil war and the emergence of literal eldritch gods. Anyway, back to seafaring. Pushing out into the unknown where disease might affect your body and mind in the way that modern science can't explain, and navigation being being fought with danger as part of the maps lay undiscovered, and navigating via the position of the stars in the sky and the magnetic points on a compass might feel like literal arcane pursuits to the everyman. All of these have parallels to 40k, but the most literal comparison between 40k's imperial star travel and the seas of old come in the idea that here there be monsters. You may stumble across systems and planets infested with the tendrils of Tilnid High Fleets, a great war, or ancient evils far beyond our comprehension. Classically, here be monsters used to refer to areas of water that were dangerous, ships were lost to storms and things we didn't quite understand. In Warhammer, it is literal. There are monsters hiding in the waters ready to rip out your soul and fuck it. But beyond that, we have demonic incursions. If the Gellerfield itself is disrupted or turned off, the walls of your ship can turn to water. Your circuits can become alive like snakes. Or worse yet, literal demonic entities will build themselves from the disemboweled remains of your crew members that have committed brutal suicide in gruesome ways, full on Event Horizon style. It is, and I quote, not a fucking good time. <laughs> We're leaving. Prior to the mutations of humans to develop their own psychic awareness and abilities, mankind was struggling to travel very far or very accurately at all without turning everyone into tomato soup or getting lost in the backwaters of the universe. The fun thing about Warhammer 40k being so far in the future and being in this dark age of technology is that there may have been periods where technology helped them to jump in similar ways to what they do now without all the psychic fuckery. We just don't know. Those records are lost. And I like that mystery. I like that a lot. Part of me doesn't like the fact that we've gone back and it's like absolutely everything about the Horus Heresy so nothing is left to the imagination or to legend. But what we do know is that mankind was not just scattered amongst the stars due to division and war, but by the unreliable nature of travelling into a literal hell dimension to traverse the expanses between worlds. The spaceships of the Imperium, both in the past and in the modern setting of 40k, go into the warp and that allows them to move through space and sometimes time but normally in a forward direction. It allows you to jump between folds in space. It's the similar thing you see in science fiction where someone folds over the paper and pushes the pen through it but instead of folding over paper to bend space itself you're actually jumping into a sub world that kind of connects to the material world in ways that are incredibly erratic. 
albeit useful for speedier travel. Think of it as an ocean beneath our reality, but it's full of monsters that want to suck out your asshole. Yeah! Once mankind started to mutate over generations, things got easier. The mutations of the psychic third eye of what we now call navigators, and just psychers in general became a much more reliable way to move through the immaterium that crude technology used earlier could not quite achieve. The emergence of psychers pushed mankind into a golden age of space travel. Psychers can also be kept in a coma, think minority report but less clean and with more cathedral architecture, and use a ward to strengthen the Geller fields, which is basically a, a spiritual field against the monstrosities of the warp, both physical and non-physical. The strongest psychers can help to plot courses and guide ships directly through the warp or use their own abilities to push back demonic incursions. There is a suggestion that the development of psychic mutations in people were gene altered and gene engineered during the golden years of mankind's technological ascension prior to the dark age of technology so that these mutations weren't naturally occurring. We forced them upon ourselves, perhaps connecting to us to the warp before we really understood it. But let's go back to that medieval parallel. A lot of these records are lost, incomplete and theoretical, so we just don't know. Much like the oceans of our world, there are tides of the warp and surging storms and anomalies. Sometimes they can close routes th thought safe for hundreds, if not thousands of years at a time. Warp storms can disrupt travel and one badly plotted journey can get you stuck or emerging late to your destination. There are instances of ships being lost for hundreds, even thousands of years to emerge with the crew having hardly aged or been turned into monsters themselves. The warp itself just does not look or act like real space. It contracts time and distances. It dilates them. I'm using real world sciencey words to describe this, even though I have no fucking idea how that works, and it probably can't be applied to a subspace hell dimension that turns people into goo. Isn't 40k awesome? The Chaos Gods themselves, as well as other entities within the warp, are fueled by and directly connected to the sentient life in the material space. So this is the best example of this. It was literally finger fucked into existence by the decadent and debauched Eldar during one of their finer, or more arguably worse moments, depending on whether you're talking to some pervert or Marquis de Sade or some shit. Yeah! Every sentient being has a trace in the warp that demons and psychers can detect. I say every, there's actually mutations that stop you from this. There are null mutations that some humans have. And orcs also kind of don't have the same warp signature that other sentient life has, although they are connected to it. What I'm getting at and why I'm explaining this is that the warp itself is not only an area you can traverse into, but it seems to be willed and changed by the mass feelings and powers of those in the corporeal realm. All of this is airy-fairy and is based off of hundreds of different novels and, 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 and canon across books over 30 years of the plus of the games existing, so it's all a bit all over the place. There was a period after Celeste squelched itself into existence where the warp was a fucking hot mess, furthering to the issues of expanse and division of races like mankind. Just like any body of water, the tides can change, they can calm and they can settle. But of course the warmer setting doesn't go without huge existential threats and cataclysmic events for long. Another example of this is that when the galaxy was set ablaze by Horus on his crusade to do a heresy, the force of chaos had deeper claws in the universe than it ever had before. The warp itself grew less predictable then and more dangerous again. But don't worry, just like in civilization you can build lighthouses to light the way. Prior to the heresy, the emperor of mankind, who was kind of the worst father in the universe, a fascist piece of shit, but also a godlike being and wizard, we can talk more about him in another video perhaps. But the Emperor saw the need for a beacon, for a lighthouse, and he begun to construct such a thing as part of his Webway project, which was ultimately planned to colonize and steal the Webway from the Eldar. Uh, this is essentially a London underground, but underneath the warp, and equally as confusing to plot onto anything in the real world. The Webway itself is not traveled through the warp, but there are tunnels that are built already, predetermined destinations, inputs and outputs with gates, and they're also fortified against the incursions of demons and similar. They're so safe, in fact, that the Dark Eldar, the perverts. They live in a city within the webway. The problem with the webway is that it's not as uh, versatile. You can't just pop out anywhere or disappear into it if you're under attack. Not unless you're near a gate at least. Beyond that as well, as people capture it and take parts of it over and other aliens start to use it, the Eldar will collapse entire tunnels and slowly the whole thing is just falling apart because they don't know how to repair it. It was gifted by the ancient ones, the old ones, and no one really knows how to make more of it. 
Anyway, the Emperor got skewered during the climactic battle aboard the Vengeful Spirit and ended up being maimed to the point of near death. He is now basically just a, a corpse with a little bit of sentience, probably holding on thanks to his powerful psychic abilities. So they installed him as the power source for the beacon, now known as the Astronomicon, the lighthouse on Earth, which allows psychics across the Milky Way galaxy to triangulate their ships and navigate far easier. It helps to settle the tides of the warp and keep the Imperium ticking. It is theorised that without the Grand Lighthouse firing out of the Emperor's pseudo-corpse atop the Golden Toilet, the waters of the Immaterial would become impossible to traverse, and thus the Imperium would fall to be a fractured remnant of its former glory and almost certainly be consumed by its predators and enemies on all sides and when you look at it maybe that'd be for the best so the temple beneath the hollowed out himalayan mountains on earth where a thousand psychers die a day to keep it maintained and powered and firing is very very important to the to the perseverance of the imperium if abaddon would ever succeed and bring the long war back to the gates of the throne world the imperium would be fucked beyond that they might be wondering how the other races walk travel while well, it's wildly inconsistent across resources codices and novels but in short the eldar have their tunnels the tower void the warp for the most part dipping in and skimming across the top of it using momentum generated by diving into the warp surface and popping back up like buoyancy and water often described like liquid but it's five times slower than imperial warp travel so the tower often die and you end up fighting like their sun it's part of the science fiction concepts at least initially when they're introduced that was kind of been removed over time because they want the characters not to age and die so they can write stories about them tyranids vary a little some sources suggest they just move very slowly like the tendrils of a large swarm or creature swarming into and around systems which works on a wider science fiction scale but doesn't really work in comparison to the time frames in which we see stories told they do have large bioforms capable of moving at faster than light speeds outside of systems and away from planets thus the Tyranids must make their way in via more conventional propulsion methods albeit conventional propulsion methods powered by farts or something uh -huh. this means that once they've arrived outside a system it may take them tens or hundreds of years to actually get right into the system giving people a chance to react but of course uh -huh. the Tyranids are overbearing in terms of number and impact orcs hollow out rocks with engines and shit some of their cruisers sometimes have warp drives perhaps powered by the pure power of imagination it's hard to tell i've got a whole video on that coming gila fields aren't common either sometimes they're on ships that the orcs have stolen orcs themselves are immune to possession and warp corruption anyway so they're unlikely to go mad and cut out their own spleens or fuck themselves with a knife and of course orcs love a good scrap so fighting to them is as important to their physiology their psychology their culture as food and social interaction is to humans so being able to get in a fist fight on the way to a war is just entertainment for them so fighting demons is fun for them. Some orcs will capture a space hulk which is a huge amalgamation of vessels that were lost in the warp and have been fused together. They'll kill the aliens and demons aboard basically for sport and fun, loot it and then push it back into the warp and just ride it to wherever it ends up taking a kind of like you know, roll the dice and see where it falls and crump the fuck out of everything along the way. The orcs are absolute lance. And then we have the Necrons, the most advanced technological race in the current setting. They can sometimes decrease the mass of their ships to near zero and propel them at vast and light speeds. Other times they just teleport to where they need to go and other times they have loads of gates spotted about, uh, repurposed webway ones, another tunnel network themselves that's not been encroached by the lesser species as they would call it. The Necrons ability to teleport mass or consciousness and similar is wildly inconsistent and far more powerful than anything any other race appears to be capable of in the canon. Being able to teleport across entire star systems in some instances and also directly teleport molecular material from ship to planet side and instantaneously to rebuild the bodies of their fallen warriors and not involving the warp like Imperial um, teleportation does. Who knows what is actually canon and what they can actually do. In essence the Necrons are absolutely broken when you start to look at the canon compared to the tabletop. Welcome to 40k. I'm Invincible Sons Pleasant Kenobi on the internet. I hope you found that video interesting, exciting, informative, or at least somewhat amusing. Hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to like the video as well and share it with your friends if they want to learn about orcs fighting demons for fun or humans mutilating themselves because they can't cope with the tides of the warp. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all soon. Ta-ta for now.